proud supporters of Africa this week. Engine. With us, you are number one. Welcome back to Africa This Week. South Africa has plans to roll out its Electronic National Traffic Information System, or ENATIS for short, into other SADC countries to modernize the management of vehicles, driver registration, and licensing in a bid to reduce the incidence of cross-border vehicle theft. Tibokhom Puti, CEO of Tasima, the developer and operator of the system, through a public-private partnership with South Africa's National Department of Transport. Tasima is the technology partner of the Department of Transport. So, so this regional integration is not really a Tasima initiative per se. Tasima is just the technology partner that's sure. going to be rolling it out. This initiative is the initiative of the ministers of departments of transport in the SADC region. Right. At their ministerial committee they had met and then obviously they talk about all other things around regional integration and one of those issues was the sharing of the technology for vehicle registration right. and driver registration. Okay. So Have you been appraised of progress in terms of who is who wants in and who doesn't want in? Well because so far. it was decided there at the yeah. SADC Minister of Transport, yeah. I take it that all the, uh, all the regional partners do want it. Okay. But first in line to sign up to take it was uh, Namibia, okay. and second in line in Lesotho. As we speak, we are busy rolling out in Namibia. We've already uh, started the rollout in Namibia of the e -natus system. Okay. And second in line will be Lesotho, of which the two countries have already signed up with the South African government to extend this, uh, this, this technology to them. Okay, so let's talk about what this entails. What exactly will you be offering these guys? Okay, what it entails is that, you, as you may be aware, South Africa has developed this very good technology that was developed by TASIMA, of course, but at the request of the Department of Transport, it's called the e -Natus system. All right. that it does, it's a vehicle and licensing system. So it registered the vehicle population and the driver population and of course it manages uh, the, the revenue that's ge generated out of vehicle licensing. Mm. So South Africa developed this at, uh, at quite a substantial cost, so it made the software available to the SADC countries. All that the SADC countries have to do is that on top, of course the software you run on top of technologies that they have to procure their technology, they have to network their country because it's a live database, it's a right. live system where you write live to it. Okay. So the regional countries have to put in their networks, put in their hardware, and install that software and begin to run the software. And there are lots of benefits for it. Let me just explain some of the benefits of this. Okay, before we go to the benefits, let's find out who is paying for this. Uh, this, the countries concerned are paying for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The South African has paid for their part right. to develop the South African system. Okay. So they are making the software available for free okay. to the SADC partners. Oh, I see. They're giving it, they're availing it free. Yeah, they're availing for free. So it means there's no license okay. fees okay. that will be paid to the South African government, which is the owner of the IP to the South African government. But the regional partners must pay for their network Equipment. and their hardware. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the benefits then. Well, the benefits is that it will ease movements within the SADC region. Mm -hmm. we, we are all aware that there's always foreign registered cars on our vehicles. Mm -hmm. one, thing, one thing that happens is that there's road infringements while they're in the country. And as you leave the borders, nobody prints out a printer and says, hang on, you've got these road infringements yeah. paid. So yeah. it will ease movement. The second ancillary benefits will be the uh, prevention of crime. So that a car does not get stolen in South Africa and gets registered in Mozambique, Zimbabwe, or any right. of the neighbor countries, right. and vice versa. You don't steal a car in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, or Namibia and register it in South Africa. Right. So for that reason, it will ease to say that when it pops out in the other SADC region, it's said, but hang on, on the South African e -native system, yeah. this vehicle is marked as stolen, and therefore we can't register it here. South Africa is beginning to see a large turnaround in skills shortage with the development of a skills model that encompasses not only basic skills, but core and advanced skills too. This is the view expressed at the gathering of leading South African and European tooling manufacturers we spoke to Henk Sneijman, CEO of the Gauteng Tooling Initiative. Uh, tool making is the basis of all manufacturing. You need to be able to make the tools to be able to make the components. Therefore, if you are not capable of making the tools, you, you and the total economy remains a, in, in, in a, remains a colony.
Mm. You can only do and only make those components and those parts and those products that uh, somebody else allows you to make. Efficiency here, and some people would say we import a lot of our parts and then we build big products. It works. Why, why should we start adding another dimension to the manufacturing process? Yeah, the, the biggest uh, challenge to South Africa is creating long-term, sustainable, quality jobs. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we ha need to do in South Africa to, to remain uh, a first world country. We will not be able to do that if we do not create our own technology be able to make the components here mm -hmm. because that is the jobs. Mm -hmm. The jobs come out of manufacturing. It's adding value, it's improving people's lives, uh, and it's, it's reducing the amount that we need to import. Since the 1980s, uh, it's reported that South Africa's lost its toolmaking capacity by a figure of about 18%, and it's largely because South Africa couldn't compete with the growing production levels in Asia. That's still a major issue right now. The manufacturing industry constantly buckling under the pressure of what we're seeing coming out of Asia. What would we do to boost capacity at this stage if it's so important? Uh, in, in terms of uh, the toolmaking industry, the, the biggest problem is a lack of skills. Now, we must realize that the government in supporting uh, TASA, which is a toolmaking association in South Africa, mm -hmm. and putting a program in place, which is a national tooling initiative program, and funding it, is make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 600 toolmakers which uh, will, uh, will complete their first year at the end of this year. They are writing international accredited exams. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with, with our capability in South Africa. It has to do with the organization thereof. Mm -hmm. so, so we're creating the skills base. With the skills base, we mm -hmm. will be able to make more tools. And this will help us to support the, the manufacturing sector in South Africa. Tool room labor figures in South Africa says that we have about 28%. Um, over and above this initiative you're talking about, what's being done to address it? Because we're told one of the biggest problems that manufacturers face in terms of managing costs is the fact that labor often cannot use the tools that, they, that they're having to, to use in the broader production process. And when those tools are broken, you can't find the skills to fix it. So you continue to have this relationship with importers and continue to have this relationship with uh, a, an exchange rate that's volatile because you're having to pay for so many services abroad. Yeah, well, that, that uh, what, Lerato, what you've mentioned is exactly the problem. And what we are now doing is we're filling the pipeline. So this year, we have 600 students. Next year, another 600. The year after that, another 600 uh, throughout South Africa. So therefore, we are filling the pipeline. And from three years from now, we will have a flood of skilled people mm -hmm. exiting the pipeline. And uh, I'm, we are very confident that they will find jobs in industry because part of their training is uh, on-the-job training mm -hmm. uh, within the industry. And uh, I'm very glad to say that 200 companies, yeah. 200 companies are participating in training these uh, these nine uh, these 600 students. They will have jobs in a, by the time they graduate. Let's just unpack that a little bit because when we look at the fact that manufacturing, although it does contribute five, one one fifth of mm. our GDP. The big problem is, again, the competitiveness of South African manufacturing. You've had industries like textiles, for instance, decimated mm -hmm. by the growing threat of uh, China. So some people are saying there are areas of manufacturing that just cannot be sustained in the current global environment, and maybe just focus on distressed industries like the automotives, for instance. But we, you know, all these efforts to get a highly industrialized economy are not going to work. We need to be looking at other things. Of course, we have to focus on our strengths. There's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, this is not the time to give up on, uh, mm -hmm. on, on a lot of the industries. Uh, I, I just want to share with you. If, for instance, we have a factory, and most of, our, most of the tool-making organizations currently work an eight-hour day. Yeah. If we take the students and, and the youngsters and the young people that will be coming out of the program uh, in three years from now, we could put them into a lot of these organizations, and we will work two shifts. So that means the one shift goes to two shifts. All the other costs within the organization stays exactly the same. With two shifts, your time to market is so much quicker. Yeah. So we are very confident that once the, 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 the uh, trained artisans, uh, tool makers hit the market, mm -hmm. we are going to make a significant difference to the productivity uh, yeah. here in South Africa.
South African defense contractor Paramount Group has launched a revolutionary new aircraft that it claims marks the rebirth of South African aerospace industry. We attended the event. Based on our success in the land forces environment, we were very confident that we could bring the same vision, exactly the same vision to the aerospace industry. Paramount developed the new aircraft in partnership with Aerosuit, a super tier one South African aerospace engineering company that manufactures components for, amongst others, the Airbus A380 and the A400M, and for Boeing. We have something like 650 people producing around a million sub-assemblies and parts for partners or, or clients, Boeing, Airbus, Super Tier 1 supplier to them, Spirit, Labinal, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to unveil to you ARLAC. ARLAC stands for Advanced High Performance Reconnaissance Light Aircraft. The plane will form an entirely new category of aircraft that will bridge the gap between unmanned aerial vehicles and piloted aircraft. Its development will be hugely significant for Africa in terms of leading technology, skills and trade opportunities. The aircraft is designed for the global market. This aircraft has applications in every single country in Africa and every single country in the world. This aircraft is not designed solely for Africa. It is designed for the United States, for the UK, for Germany, for Russia, for China. But it also has application in Africa. In Africa, this comes at a time of growing threats from terrorism, piracy, cross-border incursions, climate change, natural disasters and drug trafficking that has fueled the worldwide need for a low-cost aerial reconnaissance, surveillance and armed patrol system capable of supporting a wide range of operations. The developers were quite keen to make the project an African-owned initiative. Now the engineers you see over here are the core team. Their job is going to be to help us to train, to help us to mentor, to help us to create a core of African aerospace competence. Now, we've already done that in the land forces environment. Paramount's been doing this for a number of years, and we already have this. If you go to our factory right now, you will see Ghanaians, and you will see Congolese, and you will see people from Ethiopia, and you'll see people that we've brought back from Europe, all working side by side with our engineers on our production facility, because that's the way you train people. The new category of aircraft will challenge the dominant Western manufacturers because of its low acquisition cost, reduced equipment for back-end support, extensive operational capabilities, and greater degree of pilot situational awareness. And we've also designed this aircraft for the reality of the current economic conditions. You will notice that uh, we've not designed a fighter jet here. We've not designed uh, the next generation supersonic aircraft. We've designed an aircraft that has the potential to sell in its hundreds, if not thousands, and be cost effective for both first world as well as emerging market defense forces in the current environment. The project will reach production stage around the end of 2012 and will cost around $10 million per aircraft with up to three built per month. That's all for this edition of Africa This Week. Join us again next week for another roundup of the top stories in Africa. From me, Mashudu Masuta, goodbye.